let's have a look at, uh, as we are still setting the scene here, <laughs> we are still setting the scene here, so let's have a look at um, two examples, um, first Northern Rock and then um, RBS, okay, just to, uh, although I'm sure this will be fairly familiar to you, I'm back on slide 18. So Northern Rock is, uh, is, uh, is something that will be studied by students of um, uh, economics uh, or economic history, certainly, and, and finance for many years to come because it's a rare example, a, a, a rare example of a bank failing uh, uh, for purely for liquidity reasons. A genuine liquidity bank, a liquidity uh, failure driver of a bank failure. Okay, they're, they're, that's not that common, actually. Generally, where banks have gone bust or been taken over or, uh, or, 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 or had to be broken up or divested in some way or, or restructured in some way, it's because their capital is depleted and they become unviable over a slightly longer period of time. With Northern Rock, um, they, they, it wasn't capital depletion. They, they simply couldn't roll over their funding anymore uh, because their funding was uh, concentrated uh, in wholesale funding and there was a large chunky amount of it in short-dated wholesale funding. And uh, they ran out of that funding line and uh, they went to the central bank, the Bank of England, for assistance. And when that became common knowledge, as it did become fairly quickly when they approached them, uh, there was a run, a genuine run on the bank. Have I got a photograph for you? There we go. Now, that's not the branch on Moorgate, uh, <laughs> where I was working at the time in uh, August 2007. Oh, it says September 2007. My memory is failing me. I thought it was September 2007. But um, uh, when I was walking up uh, <laughs> Moorgate, on the way to work, quite early in the morning, must have been about 10 to 7 in the morning, one day, I, I was convinced it was August, so it must have been the beginning of September, and I saw a huge queue outside the Northern Rock on Moorgate, uh, because as, where I was working at the time, KBC Investment Bank was, was very near there, and uh, I, I couldn't believe my eyes. A, a, a queue to get your money out, and it's 7 a.m. in the morning, and very interesting sight. Uh, well, interesting is probably a sad sight as well. And the reason was, of course, was that um, the rapid balance sheet growth funded or too much reliance on wholesale funding, and a lot of that short-term wholesale, uh, no more organic growth. So in other words, their balance sheet growth, their lending growth was funded by wholesale funding and not organic customer funding. Um, resulted, and when, when they ran out of funding lines in the short end, they, they had to go to the Bank of England. And uh, when that became public knowledge, we, we had that. Um, so that's, um, uh, that's what uh, was uh, the problem at... Um, uh, at Northern Rock, and as I say, it's a rare example, quite a rare example of a uh, of a liquidity failure uh, resulting in a bank uh, falling over. Uh, so that was uh, Northern Rock and excess reliance on wholesale funding. Um, Royal Bank of Scotland, have a look at the appendix on that. Royal Bank of Scotland is also an interesting case study for students of uh, finance and economic history uh, because it was uh, what one might call a perfect storm. Everything that could go wrong did go wrong all at the same time. And um, it was a failure on th th their balance sheet suffered on the capital side due to credit losses, whether it's subprime or the ABN AMRA takeover, resulting in a balance sheet where they bought a lot of low quality assets from the ABN from the parts of ABN AMRA that they did buy. And on the liquidity side as well, a failure on the funding side, um, uh, excess reliance on short term wholesale funding as well, uh, not sufficient capital and also insufficient liquidity. So RBS is a, is a great case study as well. Have a look at the appendix, as I said. Uh, because uh, it's a perfect storm. Everything that could go wrong did go wrong, and it all happened more or less at the same time. So the institution became unviable. At the time of their demise, the balance sheet was over two trillion, or just over two trillion, I understand. Now that's about double, or just under double the size of the entire UK economy. So it gives you a size, or it gives you an indication of the size of the institution, and of course makes perfectly clear why, unlike Lehman Brothers, it could never be allowed to go bust uh, because uh, the knock-on effect on the rest of the economy would have been uh, considerable. 